Can I come in your kitchen, baby? And cook all night long with you Good evening, my friends. My name is Christina. You are here on The Main, and tonight we are making big, fat Greek burgers. I know, it's cheesy. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Tonight's live stream, as always, is brought to you by Tech Savvy, my favorite internet provider in Canada. If you haven't called them yet, not quite sure what you're waiting for. Um, probably part of the paying too much for internet club, but that's your prerogative. Off you go. Um, there are a couple things we're doing for these burgers tonight. We're going to get you guys rocking. Um, first thing we're going to do is make some tzatziki. Fire, absolute fire. We're going to make some uh, burger patties that I'm doing them with chicken. You can use lamb, pork, beef, whatever you want. This will work really, really well. Um, and we're gonna toast up some buns. It's gonna be really nice. If you guys are watching the rerun of this, there's gonna be timestamps below. We cook live most Saturday nights. And um, this is so that you guys can actually learn how things are done in the kitchen. I'm gonna take you through step by step. I do have my phone out. I am looking at your comments. And I'm so pumped you guys are all here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Let me know what you guys are drinking tonight. I got myself a little beer right here, a um, kind of a hoppy IPA. Hmm. Yes, that is for this evening. First thing we are going to make is tzatziki. So I'll run you through the ingredients really quick. If you guys have a box grater, you're gonna need one of these. So grab a box grater. We're gonna use the large holes. I've got a cup of Greek yogurt. I have a bowl out so we're because we're going to grate our uh, cucumber. Speaking of which, we need a cucumber. <laughs> I'm going to use about half of it for the tzatziki. I'm going to keep the rest of the cucumber to top our burger with, which is a phenomenal pro tip. I've got a really nice um, little handful here of fresh dill. Guys, if you don't cook with fresh dill ever, this is a game changer. It's absolute fire. I've got a lemon two garlic cloves, some white wine vinegar, and make sure you have that salt close at hand because you know we're gonna be seasoning this up just like a pro. Now, one thing I do wanna mention to you guys, um, that none of this is authentic. This is not about being authentic and cooking is not necessarily about being authentic. It's about cooking things that taste good to you and giving you guys recipes and tools that you can come back to so you can keep feeding your family really good stuff, feeding yourself really good stuff. So if you're looking at this and going, that's not how a tzatziki is made, guys, it doesn't matter. It tastes good. <laughs> that's all that matters. And if you have these ingredients on hand, you're gonna be able to come back to this. If you don't have dill, uh, parsley is a really good substitute. And I'm not saying that you can always go in and substitute um, parsley in a tzatziki. I'm saying that, you know, if you're trying to bring something like this together in your kitchen, look at what you have, use what you have. So that's exactly what we're gonna do tonight. You should have all of these nice ingredients waiting for you. We'll go through the burgers in just a second. I will say hello. We've got Jess drinking some white wine. The Hilliers, how's it going guys? You know, with a blueberry blonde. I feel like you may be talking about me with that beer. <laughs> with my <laughs> appropriate shirt for tonight. We've got uh, Bryden with some Coors Banquet. Welcome back, Bryden. And Ron, hello from the French Riviera. My favorite, my favorite. <laughs> Let's get started, guys. We are going to grate up some cucumber and we're going to squeeze it out. So grab your box grater, position it in whatever vessel you have, it doesn't matter, and go to town. Like just start grating this right in to this bowl. And I'm going for about half because I like a lot of cucumber in my tzatziki. I just like that freshness. It's, you know, cucumbers are mostly water, so we are gonna squeeze out the water. Um, but I just, I just love it. I love the chunks of cucumber. I love that nice flavor. If you want less cucumber, use less cucumber. If you don't have as much cucumber on hand, that's fine too. Just make sure you get all of this out. We're done with this box grater now. We don't need it anymore. And what we're going to do is squeeze the water out of this cucumber. You can do this at the sink or you can, I'm doing it right here so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And uh, I like, this is a great task to delegate. <laughs> so if you're cooking with someone, this is a good delegating task. I like to just take a handful of cucumber 
and squeeze it right into my bowl. Now, it doesn't have to be bone dry. Some of that cucumber liquid is nice. Now, you'll, you've, I'm sure you've had homemade tzatzikis, or if you haven't, they could tend to be a little bit uh, more watery or, or a little looser than a store-bought tzatziki. See, look, I have my um, cucumber squeezed out. I'm gonna put it right into the bowl with the Greek yogurt. I have a cup of Greek yogurt in here. So if you want your tzatziki to have that really, really thick texture, you just have to strain it overnight. Set it over a um, colander, and you will get all of this excess water out that we're not actually able to squeeze right now. But for our purposes, guys, like this still tastes delicious. So I don't worry too much about the consistency of it just because it's not particularly something that I care about. If I was serving this to a group of people and I had a lot of time, for sure, I'd make the tzatziki the day before, I'd let it drain out, but this is Saturday night. We don't need to be that particular about it. Just squeeze it and toss it. Uh, if you are a fan of cocktails and you want to take this cucumber water and make a little cocktail with it, that would be super good. I mean, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> This is all going into the bowl with the Greek yogurt. And I'm using a 0% fat Greek yogurt tonight just because that's what I have. Use whatever you want. Um, the other day at the grocery store, I saw something called Icelandic yogurt. This stuff was like 11%. That's almost sour cream. And I am 100% here for that. I'm just going to wash out my hands really quick. I mean, I'm not saying that uh, I'm going to go out and buy it but if it's around and offered to me, I'm not saying no, that's all I'm saying. I mean, sounds like a great idea to me. Whatever they're doing up in Iceland, uh, go there for their yogurt, for sure. <laughs> mm. Okay, look at this. We've got cucumber in the bowl. And again, if you want more cucumber, use more cucumber. I like a generous amount of cucumber, so that's why you're going to see a really good amount in here. I just think, why not? This is the predominant flavor in tzatziki. Let me have it. Okay, next, garlic. So, you know what I'm gonna say, you can actually use as much garlic as you want. I'm not going to fault you for it. And there's one or two ways you can do this. Later on, we're going to use a microplane for, uh, to get some lemon zest off of our lemon and get it into the, um, and get it into the burgers. You can use this same microplane to microplane your garlic if you want. I am not going to do that, but what I am gonna do, because I want to actually use uh, this lemon in, in the burgers, is I am gonna zest this a little bit ahead of time just so that I can squeeze it and use some of that lemon for my tzatziki. And if I just confused you with what I said, just follow what I'm doing and it'll all make sense. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Everyone's here tonight. It is a full house. Welcome, my friends. We are making big fat Greek burgers. This live stream happens most Saturday nights. If you'd like to cook live with us, make sure you get over to Instagram at here on the main and you will see when we post the ingredients for the upcoming uh, week. I will say this week I recipe tested something really fun and really delicious. Should I tell you what it is? Let me know if you guys want to know. I don't know. I don't know if this excites you as much as it excites me but I'm hoping to make it next week or the week after, we'll see. Uh, right now I'm just peeling garlic cloves and I'm using two garlics. So I like my tzatziki very garlicky. So I'm using two and how I'm going to do it is I'm gonna smash these garlic cloves and chop them up with a little bit of salt because when you do that, it releases the juices from the garlic just a little bit easier. <laughs> Krista says yes. I think we're getting some excitement about the garlic here. So I'm rocking my knife through this garlic and I've sprinkled a little bit of salt on my cutting board. If you opted to use your microplane for this garlic, then you, my friend, are going to have an ultra garlicky tzatziki. If you wanna add more garlic, go for it. I will caution you, garlic gets stronger as it sits. So. I always say go with a little bit less than you think because it is going to get strong. And we all remember the day that 
my good friends Candace and Dan were cooking and Dan put too much garlic in his dipping sauce. Sorry, Dan, I didn't mean to call you out in front of everybody, but it does happen. So we are just chopping up this garlic really, really fine. And I'm gonna show you a little pro tip here, guys. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna use my hand here and I'm going to mash it into my board because I would like a paste of garlic. And I'm just using this knife in kind of a smushing motion and using the blade to get all the juice out of this garlic. Look at that. That is literally a garlic paste into my bowl. Get it in there. The reason we're doing this tzatziki first, guys, I'm sure you know if you've cooked with me before, we want this to sit and infuse and really taste nice and delicious. And the more time it has, the more, um, the more those flavors are going to infuse and marry. If you are cooking for four people tonight, this recipe will serve four. If you are cooking for two, I would recommend only cooking up two of your burgers tonight, cooking up the other two for lunch tomorrow, and this tzatziki will be even better tomorrow, believe it or not. So I've got the garlic in here. I've got the grated cucumber. I will check, never thought of the salt with the garlic, yeah. Uh, yes, Candace, two cloves of garlic. And Brian, yeah, you can, um, you can really create a nice paste if you get that, that salt in there. The salt draws out the moisture. So next thing I'm gonna do is white wine vinegar. Now, I called for one and a half tablespoons of white wine vinegar and one and a half tablespoons of uh, lemon in this. So. I'll tell you, it really is to your taste. I would definitely add the one and a half tablespoons of white wine vinegar. And you know when you go, um, when you make yourself a salad dressing, maybe you don't make salad dressing, maybe you have no idea. <laughs> when you make salad dressing, you can always do it to your taste. So if you want it to be more um, vinegary, you add more vinegar. This is kind of like that. You guys, don't be intimidated or fooled by things that are like, oh, super authentic this, super authentic that. Yes, there's a time and place for all of that. But when you want to get a nice dinner on the table that tastes delicious, is super satisfying, and everyone is going to love, do it to your taste. No one is busting through the door to the authenticity police are not going to bust through your door. Don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, I've got my white wine vinegar in here, and I'm going to season this up. Uh, substitution for white wine vinegar. Uh, use lemon. Just use a really big squeeze of lemon, same amount. I started with the 1.5 tablespoons of white wine vinegar in my tzatziki. I usually um, do a combination of lemon and white wine vinegar just because that's what I prefer. Again, you do what you prefer. I'm going to season this up and I'm going to do a nice generous sprinkle of salt. And remember, we've talked about seasoning your food before. If you try your dish and it tastes muted or like something is missing, it probably needs salt. In this case, it could need salt or acid. Acid is one of the salts of cooking, believe. It does the same thing. It wakes up flavors. It brings things together. I'm going to grab da -da -da -da, an espresso spoon and give this a little try. Mmm. Oh my God. Mmm, guys, I'm actually getting heat from that garlic, but I do want lemon. I absolutely want lemon. So here's what I'm gonna do. Hmm, I'm gonna cut a little wedge out of this lemon because I want to use the lemon zest in my um, in my burgers later. So I want to still be able to zest this, and I'm just gonna put some lemon in here. Again, you try it. If you want more acid, you want some lemon flavor. Bring the lemon flavor. It's that easy. Here we go. Oh yes, this is gonna be perfect now. I can smell it already. Give this a try, make sure you're trying it, guys. The last thing you wanna do is try your food at the very end when it's on the table. Then you've gone too far. That's why you, never, you should never be afraid of cooking good food in your kitchen if you're trying it consistently. You will never be that far from bringing it back to life. And you'll see it's quite loose. If you wanted this to uh, firm up and you wanted that thicker, creamier texture, you would let this strain over a strainer with maybe a piece of cheesecloth or a coffee filter 
overnight in the fridge and you would get that really, really thick texture. So I'm gonna go back in and try this. Mmm. Done. Right there. Mmm. That's where I want that to be. Again, I'm not worried about that tonight. We're trying to bring this together in a decent amount of time. And this is a recipe you can go to on a weeknight. If you're working from home right now, you can make this in the morning. Let this sit till dinner and you will be weeping with joy come 6, 7 p.m. Whenever you eat dinner, I don't judge. Mmm. That's getting set aside. I'm going to get some of this stuff out of here. Oh, yes, that is very good. That is very, very good. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Candace's Dan was pumped about the shout out. Sorry, Dan, I didn't mean to out you with your garlic there. <laughs> and yes, Brian says I'm helping people. Oh, I forgot one key ingredient. Oh my God. Um, Brian says I'm helping people <laughs> with their get over their fear of trying. Yes, see, this is it. I'm moving quick, this is live. So forgive me, please. I almost forgot the dill, my favorite ingredient. Guys, hack off that dill, give it a good, fine chop. See, this tzatziki was already tasting fire before. This dill is going to take it to the next level. Get that dill in there. Again, if you don't have dill and you're like, man, I'd really like to make that tzatziki, that would be so, so good. Don't worry. You use whatever herbs you have. Again, nobody's busting through the door to tell you anything. If it tastes good to you, do it. Okay. I'm sorry, Tatsiki. My God, I almost forgot about your dill. Come on. Look at that. Look. Now he's better. I knew something was missing. See? We're just throwing that confidence out there. You gotta fake it till you make it, guys. Look at that. What's the big reveal for next week? <laughs> Big reveal for next week. I would really like to make Salisbury steaks. I mean, if you don't know what that is, it's so freaking good. It's like a steak with ground beef. Mmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, much better. There we go. That needs to hang out. I need to uh, wash my hands really quick because I'm super excited to prep these burgers with you guys. Now, tonight I'm going to be cooking my burgers in a cast iron pan. You use whatever you have. If you have a stainless steel, that'll work really well. Honestly, a nonstick will work well for this too. Um, just get whatever you want. A cast iron is just the biggest one that I have and I am gonna cook up, uh, am I gonna cook up all four burgers? Do we need to cook up all four tonight? Yeah, I'm gonna cook up all four tonight. I'm getting a nod. A nod from the uh, hungry director, producer, cameraman, um, setup guy. <laughs> Four burgers it is. I did make some buns today. That was fun. Um, the other 1.5 tablespoon of lemon juice doesn't go in. So I added uh, a tablespoon and a half of lemon juice and a tablespoon and a half of white wine vinegar to my tzatziki. I like an acid forward um, I like an acid forward sauce, and this is the sauce that's going to adorn our burger, our big fat Greek burger. So if you added your white wine vinegar and you would like more acid, I'm gonna say you probably will. I think it doesn't need it. Start adding lemon juice and squeeze in as, start slow, start with a tablespoon, and then if you feel like you need it, add another half a tablespoon. But honestly, take that lemon, squeeze it right over, I am going to zest this, so that's why I just cut a wedge so that I can still get the zest off of here because it's going into the burgers. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Can you tell? Very excited about it. Dill is the best part, Amanda says, for sure. You guys are doing well. Let me know if you're cooking along. Um, if you are watching the rerun of this, there's timestamps below. Let me know if there's ever anything you guys want to see us cook because... Uh, I aim to please, my friends. I love to cook everything. I love it. Challenging, not challenging. One of my favorite things to do, guys, as I'm just gonna bring in my burger ingredients here, one of my favorite things to do is actually watch cooking videos and cooking content, read cookbooks. So what I am I'm doing is amassing all of this knowledge 
filtering through it, trying it out myself at home, seeing what, what works best and then bringing only the best to the best to you. So you don't, I know you don't have time. Maybe you're not consuming this stuff for enjoyment like I am. Um, and that's why, you know, I hope you subscribe because that's exactly what we're doing here. I'm bringing you the best of the best stuff that works in your kitchen. Cause I find sometimes, um, people who are making food on the internet, forget that not all of us have all day to prepare a recipe, which is why I like to take you guys through this in real time because it, it has to survive live. If it can't survive live, it's not going to survive real life. <laughs> um, Jessica's saying she put fresh pepper in. Absolutely. You do whatever you like for your taste. I'm not putting fresh pepper in my tzatziki and that's just fine. I'm going to put some fresh pepper in this meat though. So let me show you my um, surefire way for making burgers, any type of burger meat that's going to be mixed up. My favorite thing to do is to get a nice big bowl and mix all of my ingredients in the bottom of the bowl before I add my meat. Now this is going to ensure a really nice even mix on that burger and you're going to be able to um, mix the meat less. The less you work with the meat, the more tender it's going to be. So that's why this is a real pro tip here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is add my, where are we gonna start? Let's start with our egg. One egg into the bowl. This is gonna be our binder. So when you're doing a burger that has a lot of um, mix-ins, which I'll be honest, I don't actually normally do. I, my my um, takeout style five minute burger is on the channel. I'll leave an info card to it here. And that one, we don't add anything to the meat. We just let it stand on its own. This is a little bit of a different style and that's why I wanna encourage you guys to, to have fun with it. So throw things in your burger, it's not a big deal. I got one egg in here. To my one egg, I'm adding two teaspoons of uh, dried oregano, one teaspoon dried thyme, and a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. Now, I wanna tell you guys, there is no right or wrong way to, to make this burger. I am doing dried spices because it's still winter here, and you know, if, if this is just what people always have on hand, if you happen to have fresh parsley, fresh oregano, all kinds of fresh stuff, throw that in here. That would go phenomenal. There's no right or wrong way, or there's not only one way to do this. You wanna work with what you've got and use what's gonna be delicious. This is gonna, there's no way that any of this is going to taste bad. So that's my, that's my advice to you. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna give this a little mix just cause I want that egg to incorporate. And I'm going to add to this as well one tablespoon approximately of olive oil. Now, one generous turn of the bowl. The reason I'm adding olive oil is because I want this to stay. I need to add some fat. If you've noticed, it's very hard to find um, like a medium ground chicken. It's all extra lean. So that means that there's not as much fat in this chicken as say like a chicken thigh. And in order to maintain that juiciness and maintain that nice texture, we want to do two things. We want to add fat to the burger and we want to not overcook it. Yes. I'll show you guys how to do that once we get to the stove. So mm, smells delicious. So I'm also going to season this up. Now I have a pound of ground chicken here. Um, usually you would do about a teaspoon of salt. Um, I'm using pink Himalayan. If you're using table, use much, much less. Normally you do about a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. Now, if you're doing feta tonight, if you have some feta, I have some sheep's milk feta right here. Um, you're going to want to add less salt because the cheese is salty, right? So I'm going to start and sometimes what I like to do, and this might sound strange, but if you've watched that burger recipe, uh, a burger video, you would, you would know that you kind of season by eye. I actually like to look at my meat while I'm seasoning and imagine the seasoning dropping down on the meat and how much that would actually be if I were letting it go down in one layer. So I just added about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and it's, that's probably going to be enough with my feta. If you really, really, really want to make sure you can fry a test patty 
I'm not gonna do that tonight just because I'm fairly confident in, in where we are with this. And I'm stirring this just to dissolve the salt. Remember, when you season something, it needs to actually dissolve. So if you're uh, nervous about seasoning, go slow, not a big deal. All speeds welcome. I'm gonna add a generous pinch of black pepper to this, also about a quarter of a teaspoon. Again, to your taste, guys, if you really like pa black pepper, go crazy here. Mmm, that's beautiful. That fresh black pepper smells amazing. I've got a tablespoon and a half of Dijon mustard. This is one of my favorite ingredients to add to burgers like this because the flavor, mmm. Oh yeah, yes, I'm licking my fingers, it's my kitchen. You lick your fingers in your kitchen. So when we're doing this, look at that nice color. You should be getting a phenomenal smell from this. The next thing I'm going to add is that lemon zest. So, Candace, after the spices, did you put the olive oil in the burger mix? Yes. After the spices, the olive oil went into the burger mix. One tablespoon. And that, like I said, was to get the, um, the fat into the burger. And I am just zesting this lemon and I'm using this little, look at this, it's like a built-in handle. <laughs> I'm zesting this lemon as best I can and I'm just gonna get as much of it as I can. There's no right or wrong amount of lemon zest. I mean, in my opinion, the more the better. I love lemons in case you hadn't noticed from our logo and all kinds of things. I'm getting all this lemon in. I really wanted to do this with um, lamb, but I was uh, just nervous that too many people were going to be turned off by lamb. Let me know if you like lamb, if you're turned off by it, what your thoughts are on it. I think it's lovely, underrated. Okay, stir this in. Oh, guys, this should be smelling phenomenal right about now. Last two ingredients, I think I've got everything. Breadcrumbs in a third of a cup. These breadcrumbs are going to help bind things. This is going to be a more wet burger and that is because we don't want it to be dry. <laughs> if your burgers are super, um, are super dry, very easy to handle, and they don't have a lot of fat, it's, they're gonna be like hockey pucks. If you're working with like an 80, 20 ground beef, it'll be fine, it'll be nice and firm because that fat is firm when it's cold. If you're working with an extra lean ground chicken like I am, you want this to be a little bit uh, loosey-goosey. So, perfect, we've got some lamb fans. I just added the breadcrumbs, Sam, just now. And I'm breaking to sip my beer. Mm. So here's my mixture, guys. Don't worry. If yours is a little bit thicker or a little bit looser, if you find it's too thick, add some more olive oil. If you find it's too loose, add another shake of breadcrumbs. Like I said, no one's gonna bust through your door and saying you're doing it wrong. Let's smell this. The smell will tell you a lot. You should smell Dijon mustard, lemon. Those spices will wake right up once we get them frying. Mm. Feta. I think I told you about a half a cup, eh? Truth is, you add as much as you want. I'm crumbling this feta right in. And now guys, it's going to crumble into various sizes, but I'm not worried about these larger chunks because what's gonna happen is those larger chunks are going to melt, they're gonna get soft, and they're going to be dotted throughout your burger. And you probably thought this was going on top maybe, eh? <laughs> the nice thing about putting feta right in the burger too is that you will end up with some nice caramelization on this cheese um, on the outside of the burger where it's touching the pan. Now, normally I may or may not lick my fingers while there's feta on it. I won't for your sake. You're welcome. I'll do a little wash up right here. Mm. Let me know how it's going, guys. This is a great time to uh, preheat your pan. I am going to preheat it to number eight because I want my pan to um, I want my pan to come up nice and high because we know that when the meat hits it, it's going to 
um, it's going to reduce the temperature of the pan. So we want it to come back up quickly. I'll show you guys the pan I am using. This is my cast iron skillet. Really nice from Staub. I love this one. And this is just what's going to accommodate all of these burgers for me. Like I said, you guys use whatever you happen to have that's going to work really well um, to accommodate the burgers. Like I said, nonstick is going to work. Stainless steel is going to work. No concerns. I'm going to give this mixture just a little uh, toss here to get that feta incorporated. Mmm. Oh, that smells so good. I can smell that lemon zest. Heck yes. Okay. Beautiful. I think I might. I'm going to put one more tablespoon of olive oil in my mix. Because what's going to happen is the, um, the liquid's going to be absorbed by the breadcrumbs. So this is not going to be hurt by too much olive oil. So I just threw another olive oil um, tablespoon in there. Here we go. Ground chicken right in. Oh, yes. And now I'm going to mix this up. And I'm not too concerned about making sure it's like absolutely perfect. Guys, perfection is for Instagram. <laughs> this is live cooking. This is your actual kitchen. You'll notice I, uh, I'm not super particular sometimes about pictures and that, that kind of stuff on Instagram because I like it to look real. I like it to be the actual food we're eating, the actual food we're creating, and I'm just mixing this up. You can certainly get your hands in there. It's not my favorite thing, I'll be honest. What I tend to, to do um, on a weeknight is I'll, what if we run out of tzatziki before we cook it? <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> get your sous chef making more. Um, what I like to do on a weeknight is uh, get out my KitchenAid mixer. And I actually put all this right in the KitchenAid mixer and it comes together like in 30 seconds if you want this to go faster and you happen to have a KitchenAid. Okay, so I'm looking for big chunks of um, that breadcrumb mixture and I'm not seeing any. It looks really good. I'm smelling this because the smell will tell you a lot, guys. The smell will let you know that you can, if you, you should be able to smell that Dijon, that lemon, those spices. That's how you know how this is going to taste. So we're going to form some patties. Get out a plate. And I'm going to, this is how I portion out my meat. I'll show you. I pat it all down in the bottom of the bowl. Just pat down that meat. It doesn't have to be perfect. I try and make it flat. And then I portion it out in the bowl like this. Again, it won't be perfect, but it'll give you something to work with and somewhere to start. So then I'll take that piece out. Let's bring it over here. And I'm not going to worry too much about keeping it super compact. I actually tilt my hands. I'll show you the up here. Uh, I actually tilt my hands and I let the, the ball kind of fall down. So my palms are almost touching down here and it just forms kind of a loose ball. I put it down, give it a nice pat. Now here's a pro tip guys. The burgers are going to shrink. First of all, they're going to shrink a little bit. If the more fat that's in your meat, the more it's going to shrink. Um, this is you, we want to make sure we get good caramelization on the outside of the burger before the inside overcooks. So I'm actually going for about a half inch here on my burgers because I want, I want these to cook. Well, I want to get a good amount of color on the outside. Um, I am going to be using my Thermapen tonight. I know you guys are sick, probably sick of hearing me talk about the Thermapen. Um, use the plate also to help you form. Just push it down. Um, the Thermapen is going to let me know when the, inter the um, internal temperature of this, this meat reaches about 160, which is our temp for cooked chicken. Candace likes that there's lemon in the burgers. Yeah, girl. Look at that. You see how we have this feta on the outside of the burger? Those are going to be the money pieces that everybody fights over. And you want to look at the burger and judge it based on the size of your bun. 
It's okay if it hangs off a little bit. That's that good good. And this looks phenomenal. The fact that I already know that this is lunch tomorrow <laughs> is great. And you'll see, I'm not like, I'm not squishing these down because this is like, this is like a little baby. You can't squish him. He's going to be uncomfortable and it's not going to, it's not going to go well, guys. You're going to have little hockey pucks. Let it, let it, you know, you know, it's like a relationship. You need some air to let the fire burn. It's the same way you're cooking. You got to, don't squish the life out of it. We did that with the... <laughs> Why do I feel like everyone's laughing right now? If you're laughing with me and not at me. Like we already squished the cucumber. This is like, this is now little, little babies. There we go. Okay, beautiful. Ah. Guess what? We're on the stove, but I'm gonna show you one more trick before we get there. I'm gonna show you one more trick. I'm washing up my hands because you guys probably think we're gonna go and put oil in that hot pan. Well, let me tell you, if you do that, you know what's gonna happen? Your whole place is going to be smoked up like crazy. And that is not the pro way to do this. I'm gonna show you the pro way to do this. You don't oil the pan, you oil the burgers. So I'm going in with a little drizzle. That's that other tablespoon I told you guys to have. Little drizzle of olive oil on these burgers. And we're gonna rub them. We're just gonna rub these little guys. Heck yes. Get this oil all over the burgers. Gingerly pick it up. Get it on the other side. And if you're like, how did she just pick that up so easy? Guys, like when I say gingerly, can they see this if I put this, okay, perfect, watch. I'm like taking my little fingers, like I was playing the piano, and I'm going, okay, come here, come here, come here. And we're done. Put the oil on the other side, fix that shape. There we go, again, gingerly, pick up that burger. Okay, don't be gentle, guys. I know you, know, or sorry, don't be uh, forceful. I know you know how to do this. Here we go, gingerly, pick that guy up. Oil everywhere, and this is your pro tip to keep that smoke out of your kitchen. Well, less. <laughs> you have less smoke in your kitchen. No guarantees of no smoke. My pan is ripping hot, guys. Holy moly. I'm gonna have to turn that down. This is cast iron. Okay. Oh yeah, good. Now, you guys, you want your pan nice and hot. We don't want it on high, high. We don't want it um, we don't want these to burn the second you lay, lay them in, but we do want to hear a sizzle because when we hear a sizzle, we know brown flavor is happening. So bring these burgers over to the stove. I'm going to let you look at this beautiful tzatziki. Give this the odd stir. I always like to do that. And we're going to bring you over to the stove right now so you can see what's happening here. We have these gorgeous chicken burgers ready to hit the heat. I'll show you, I do have some smoke happening on this pan and I don't necessarily want all that smoke. So I'm just gonna tuck it off to the side for a moment while I grab everything else. By everything else, I need my phone and my beer. <sighs> mm. Phenomenal, okay. I'm ready, I'm ready, are you ready? Get those burger buns rocking too. Guys, uh, we're gonna toast these buns. We're going to, while these guys are cooking, we're gonna prep the toppings for the burger. Like this is, you guys are working like pros now. You're using your time well. Okay, grab your spatula. Now you can either do one of two things. You can gingerly pick up these burgers like I showed you. Um, I am just going to slide my spatula underneath. Get this guy into the pan. You hear that sizzle? That's a good sign. Another one in, another one in. However you get it into the pan is up to you. I'm making sure my shape is still good. There we go. If you guys are cooking two at a time, all good. Cook as many as you need to. There's no right or wrong, guys. Never, well, I won't say never. Sometimes there's a right and a wrong, but I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll tell you if it matters. <laughs> when I say that, I mean like, guys, I, I spend an exorbitant amount of time watching this type of stuff, learning, trying, cooking. So I'm bringing you what works at home in the kitchen. I've got my heat 
set to medium number five what medium is going to allow you to do is to let that crust develop on one side the heat to start coming up through the burger and the nice thing is guys is we're going to be able to see when the heat gets about halfway up our burger you'll see excuse me you'll see the color change from this you know raw meat kind of pinkish color to a more opaque kind of white color excuse me so that's what we're looking for these are going to do good things all on their own like I smell the lemon zest. I smell the Dijon mustard. Yes, I'm thinking maybe 10 minutes. I'm gonna set my timer for five, mostly so that I don't forget about them because I know you guys are watching and uh, I'm looking for these indicators. I am going to leave these right here. You guys are doing so well. Either you're all cooking and you're, you don't need me or what, I don't know. <gasps> but there's no questions. I'll get some of this stuff out of here because we're going to start prepping our toppings. So toppings are essentially completely up to you. If you guys don't like something that we're doing for toppings, don't use it. It's not a big deal. If you're like, oh, why didn't she tell us to use this? This is really good. Maybe I don't like it. I don't know. <laughs> you use what sounds good to you. I'll tell you what I have tonight. I've got some lettuce. I'm going to shred this because that's how I prefer lettuce on my burger. I've got a tomato that like is on its last leg. I won't show you, I'll only show you it's pretty end, like it's Instagram, only the pretty side. Um, I've got a red onion because hello, it's Greek red onion. And the rest of this cucumber. In my very, very humble opinion, like you literally don't have to listen to anything I say, but cucumber, cucumber is money on this and I like to slice it uh, on the thicker side. So here we go. I'm checking on this, oh perfect, guys. So good. Okay, let me get a plate so we can make this look all nice. Here we go. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Let me know how it's going. If you've made it this far in the live stream, I certainly hope you're subscribed because uh, we work extra hard to get these lives out for you guys each and every week that we can manage. I always say that because real life happens. I'm sorry, it does. <laughs> I'm uh, just gonna start by slicing up this uh, slicing up this cucumber and you'll see like this is not the thinnest cucumber I like some nice planks of cucumber really really nice pickle would probably be good on here I'm using pickled hot peppers which is why um, I'm not adding anything like that I really I'm a big fan, like I said, of acid. So you need to do what you like. If pickles are like the worst thing known to man to you, don't use them. That's okay. Dave is saying it smells unreal. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I just, I, I do like going out to restaurants, but I have to say I'm usually more disappointed than not because I do, because I, I do know how to cook and I'm hopefully, you know, showing you guys how to cook. Um, when things aren't done properly in the restaurant you can tell and it's you know it's a disappointment because it's expensive you go out a bottle of wine is 60 bucks a main is 20 to 40 bucks depending on what type of restaurant you're at I'm just going to start cutting this tomato and uh, I know they work hard that you know the restaurants I do I like to do thin slices of tomato that's just my preference you do you um they're it's all going to taste the same but like guys I, I know they work hard in the restaurant i know they do a good job it's just my personal preference is to eat at home i like the comfort i like choosing my music i like the mood lighting nearly every light on my place is on a dimmer and uh that's just that's just my preference and i like entertaining people at home so there we go Next, red onion. I just love this stuff. Ron is saying he used Pablo oh, Panko breadcrumbs. It was a disaster. That's okay, Ron. If let me tell you, if your panko is just causing a giant disaster for you, add um, if you have some milk, add some milk. That'll help. That'll bring it back. When I say some milk, I mean like a quarter of a cup, maybe even a third of a cup. Mm. oh yeah 
We got everybody. Everybody's here tonight. Blanchard said that the ladies in his life are watching and they love the show. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. I love people that love good food. Now, when I talk about good food, red onion. I love onion on my burger. So I'm going to go in. Sorry for the noise. I'm working on my knife technique here. There we go. Look at this beautiful color. I usually like to, uh, I always have pickled red onions in my fridge. Very mushy, Ron says. Ron, it'll still cook up good. If you've got the egg in there, it'll cook up good. Don't worry. Just get it into the pan. Trust me on that one. You might need a little extra salt. Okay, come over here. We're going to check on these burgers. Mmm. Yes, timer, I'm coming. Oh, yes. Okay, I'm gonna show you. I'm just gonna lift right underneath to check and I'll show you. Oh, that's money. Look at that right there. That is the color we're going for and I'm gonna flip these. Now what I wanna show you guys, look at this. Look at, here I'll pick this up actually so they can see. You'll see my chicken is cooked halfway up on the outside. That doesn't mean it's cooked halfway up on the inside as well. That just means we're getting close. So um, look at that color right there. That's what I said, Ron. The second you start uh, cooking these, they will firm up. Look at those money right there, those little money pieces. Get these all flipped. Yep, bam. I'm gonna leave this on medium heat because remember guys, we want the middle to cook long before the outside burns. We do not want that outside to burn. Just to, to give you guys an indication of where we're at, I got my thermopen if you need one, which honestly you do. There's a link in the description box down below. I'm at, one, I'm at 130, 132, 134. Yeah, we're not far. We're not super far. I'm gonna set this for another five minutes. Leave this on medium, but this is gonna come together so, so, so fast, guys. Let's see. In the pan, not too bad. Yes, Ron, stick with it. You're going to get there. I believe in you, my man. <laughs> lettuce. I like lettuce on my burger. I like the crunch it brings. I've just got some, some romaine here, um, but you use whatever you have. You could even throw some baby spinach on here. I'm going to shred this. Whatever works for you. You've got some Boston leaf. That would be phenomenal, but like, I'm sorry, I can't pay that price for Boston leaf lettuce. It's so expensive here. If you know a cheaper place to get it, let me know. Look at that, heck yes. Mangiare, it's going to be good tonight, my friends. There we go. This plate's looking beauty, guys. Look at that, I'll show them here. Bring this all front and center. Give my tzatziki a stir. I'm gonna have a little bit more just because uh, Dave mentioned it earlier. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. Okay, I've got some hot peppers. Let me show you. I like these little guys because they bring a little bit of sharpness, they bring a little bit of heat, and I'm just gonna chop these up. No rhyme or reason. Just run my knife through them. You'll see there's some nice brine that comes out in the middle. We're gonna allow that to, uh, to still mingle in there. And right after this, guys, because we're gonna be really close to being done on those burgers, I'm gonna do my broiler because I wanna make sure I can toast these buns. Look at that plate, come on. That's beautiful, just beautiful. Broiler is going on, my friends, and I'll show you the buns I made today, I'll show you two of them. You've seen me showcase these guys before. Ah, yes, Jessica's saying she thought she had banana peppers, but she's using jalapenos. Yes, I love jalapenos, absolutely use those. Um, depending on what kind of time you had, a quick pickle on a jalapeno is not hard to do. Like, you just throw a little bit of uh, equal mixture of 
uh, white vinegar, some water, and a uh, little sprinkle of salt, a little sprinkle of sugar, that easy. Pour them over the jalapenos. Wait 10 minutes. Guys, like you've quick, quick jalapeno pickle, done. These are my burgers. I'll show you the inside. This is a damn joke, like really. Look at this burger. The smell, the yeasty smell off of these buns are just phenomenal, phenomenal. I'm going to set these right here. Let's see how these are doing. Oh yeah, I'm touching these in the middle because if it's very, very squishy, it means we're not cooked at all. But I'm getting a firm resistance and I'm checking the temp. Not quite, we're not quite there, so I'm gonna let them go. I'm at 140, almost 150. Guys, the reason I do love this thermometer is because um, I only have to insert the very, very tip to get a read on where these burgers are at. Um, and and it's, it's accurate within, within a degree or two, so definitely worth it. I'm still on medium, number five. These are, oh yes. Guys, these look so good. They're smelling good too. Let me know if you guys have any questions while we're waiting for these. The second my um, broiler comes up, which I can see it is, I'm gonna get these buns toasting. If you like to toast your buns, get them under that broiler. If you don't like to toast your buns, you do not have to. John and Jess, we remember what happened, so please be careful. We don't need to light our buns on fire. I'm just gonna pop these guys underneath. I can see my timer counting down to what we're hoping will be the final chicken burger, but we will see. I'm gonna take out a clean plate because we do not want any cross-contamination. On that note, I'm gonna give my uh, spatula just a quick um, wipe. I'm not that concerned. Like, I really don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal, but I don't want the internet to come for me. So, I washed it, okay? <laughs> Let's see how you guys are doing. Candace, we turned the stove down to low. Uh, yeah, take them off. If you think they're done, get those burgers off for sure. You guys have a few more questions? Ah, Colleen, I can't tell what you're saying, unfortunately, but hopefully it's, it's favorable. <laughs> Perfect. I'm getting a really, really good uh, aroma coming off of these. We're nearly there. Ah, you see, I've got some juice coming up. You want the juices to run clear. And I think we're just about there. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave these on for just a minute longer. Just while these buns are toasting. If you guys have any questions, now is a great time. I don't know exactly what beer I'm drinking, but it's good, it's nice. Mmm. Hoppy, which I do prefer. One of my favorites when it's like got nice bitter flavor on the beer. Hell yeah, it's hot in the kitchen as always. Yes, if you guys find that your chicken burgers are done, try and avoid cutting into them. All of your juices are going to run out. But if they're done, move them over to the plate. I'm checking the other side. Money. These are beautiful. Guys, they're perfectly golden brown. I'll show you. Come on over. Look what that other side looks like. Just stunning. Dave Blanchard wants to know how David's doing back here. I think he's doing well. I think he's getting hungry, to be honest. <laughs> it's ultra focused, getting these shots for you guys. Beautiful. This is smelling good. I'm going to kill the heat on this. Those are almost done. Mm. I'll do one more temp check. Oh yeah, look at that, climbing, climbing, climbing. I don't want these to overcook, guys, and look, like I said, I was just gonna show you what we're looking for. We've got a fully cooked patty right through. We have lots of resistance happening here. We have juices running clear. Mm. Yes, I'm linking my finger again, my kitchen. Okay, these are coming off. These are doing very, very, very well. Let's see. 
Very well, yep. That is a good toast. Let's get all these off. If you guys are cooking with cast iron as well, I'll let you know. The best way to clean a cast iron, get some coarse salt down in here with a little bit of water, scrub it with a, a, a paper towel, and that's it. You really don't want to take soap to your cast iron because you'll ruin that beautiful seasoning, a beautiful patina that it's developing. Let's see. Oh yeah, guys, money, here we go, bam. Okay, let's get this one over. That'll be the show burger, because I got some of the oven on this one. It's okay. Okay, time to plate this up. How are you guys doing? Yes, absolutely. Dave says, I think David needs the props for doing the equally hard work. Absolutely, are you kidding me? David is the man, literally, all of it. <laughs> This would not happen without David, ever. Producer extraordinaire, director, cameraman, the whole nine yards. Thank you. Dave looking out for the Dave, eh? <laughs> I'm going to build this burger. Come on in. Okay. Where do we want to start? I'm going to be honest. I like to go in with double tzatziki. So I like to go right on the bottom and right on the top because I always feel like the sauce stays on the burger better if it goes on the bottom first. Now, pro tip when you're building a burger, go a little extra heavy with the sauce in the middle because when you squeeze the burger, it's going to come out the sides. That's all I'm saying. Now, I'm going to get my onion down on the bottom and you put as much as you like. I like a lot. No one is surprised. And what else am I going to put on the bottom? I'm going to put my cucumber because you'll remember I cut these nice and thick and I'm just going to shingle them around like this. Mm -mm -mm. And my pickled hot peppers. I think if I can be so bold to say, I don't think people make enough use of the bottom bun of the burger. Here we go. I'm going to show you guys this. Look at this burger. Do you see these nice pieces of feta? If you weren't here, I would dig that out right now and eat it. Look, the other side is beautiful. Right on top, heck yes. Now, give me a thumbs up if you're also wondering how I'm gonna eat this, because I am making it going holy moly. Just two pickles for me, because I'm actually not the hugest, or sorry, two tomatoes for me, because that's my least favorite burger topping. Adorn this with some lettuce. And I'm going to do tzatziki on the top bun. Guys, what's happening here? Look at this burger. David's laughing at me. Are you laughing at me? I think he's laughing at me. What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't know about this. What are you laughing at? You think it's funny? What's funny about this? <laughs> Does it look good though? Mm -hmm. If I was to push it down? They're gonna wanna see me eat this, aren't they? Guys, can we just with this burger? I'm just saying. I'm gonna get a cross section for you because I love you. And you are very welcome for this. Yep. Oh yeah. Ready? This is the money shot, guys. Right there. Perfectly cooked chicken. Beautiful tzatziki. I'm absolutely gonna eat this. Maria says, looking great. Perfect. All right, friends, I do this for you. Look at this. I swear to God, David is cringing right now because he doesn't know how I'm going to eat this. Same technique as always, guys. I squeeze the back like a little baby and I go in. Mmm. Mmm. Is that my face? Yeah. 
Mm. Oh, yep. Mm. If you guys have any other questions, now is the time while I stuff my face. Because this is so damn good. Okay, this is it. Burger's unbelievable. Guys, perfect. Dave, thank you. Eunice, how's it going, buddy? A little late, but you gotta make these burgers. I cannot thank you guys enough. If there's, any, if there's anything you guys wanna see, comment down below. The second this video goes live, please like this video. Leave me a comment. It helps our channel. This is huge. I'm gonna eat this burger. Thank you for joining me. I'm Christina, and you are here on the main. Bye, guys. Mmm. Mmm. Can I come in your kitchen, baby? And cook all night long with you